everyone's Chris, and I'm back with my February wrap-up. And yeah, my surgery went well. For anyone who you guys knew about the surgery, um, I had to stay overnight in the hospital for a couple of nights, but it was fine. Um, yeah, still recovering, some pain, but I'm good to film, so I'm back. And I read quite a few, a good amount of books in February, so we're just going to jump into it. Starting off with the books that I read for the Rainbow Sign. We... Rainbow Sign, Read a Sign, Rainbow Read a Sign, that thing. The books I did for Red and Orange was Dan Brown's Angels and Demons. This book is really heavy on the science and religion, but it was really interesting. It was really pretty fast paced. Um, it's based this big terrorist attack by the Illuminati, essentially, um, that's going on. And people are trying to figure out if it's really the Illuminati, if it's not. There's so many twists in this book um, that I really, really enjoyed. And I just didn't see coming, and I just really liked it a lot. I need to go ahead and get the Venture Code, and I think there's a movie for this, and I want to watch it if there is. Uncharted Territory by Story Spelling. Story Spelling's life is quite interesting. I watched a bit of her show, um, which she talks about in this book, uh, but then she a lot of this is like this could be like the diary of the workaholic. She's such a workaholic, um, and. It, you kind of just start off with that and kind of see her trying to go through the story and trying to figure out some things that she needs to change about herself and things about her life that she's been trying to tackle for a long time. And I really, really enjoyed reading it. It was very, very good and very, very quick read as well. So I really enjoyed it. Almost Green saves one, I Saved One Sixth of a Billion of the Planet. This is an environmental memoir by James Lave about him creating an eco shed for his, like, projects. I think he's a writer for his, I think it was for Eco Shed for his writing. Um, if you're not if you're very familiar with environmental studies and environmental science and these things, this there's things in this book that will confuse you because he doesn't explain things when it comes to Eco Shed. Also, the Eco Shed, well, it, it's, it's carbon efficient, I guess, but it's not the most ecological, it, it's not the best eco shed it could be, in my opinion. That's all I'm saying. Like, there's some improvements that could be made in the process of how he made it. Um, and so that was something that also stood out to me. But he's a good writer. He is a good writer. I thought this was written well. I read through it really, really fast. He's a good writer. I just thought there were some issues with the process and the way that he went about things. That's all. Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare. I finally read it. This is my boyfriend's copy. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. I see why so many people like the story. It was really crazy seeing Brutus and Caesar actually not have heard all the references of that. But, like, Caesar totally didn't deserve to get stabbed that, that, like that. At least that's what I thought when I was reading it. I was just like, well, this is not necessary at all. But it happened. And, yeah, it's a really, really good Shakespeare story. I really enjoyed it a lot. All right, Spy vs. Spy, uh, Black and White Ops. This is just a bunch of comics of, like, the Spy vs. Spy thing, and they were really, really funny. Some more than others, but I really, really enjoyed it. Also, this book is really purple, and I found it downstairs in the library, and now I have it, because it's mine. So that was it for the Rainbow Thon books, and so we're gonna go into some other books that I read right now. I finally read Two Parties, One Tux, and a short, very short film about the Graves of Wrath by Stephen Goldman. I bought this book in, like, my, my first book haul when I started BookTube, and so it's just been sitting on my shelf. Um, it, it had, there's a better cover than this. There's another cover that's better than this one. It's basically about this guy, I don't remember his name right now. Does it matter? Oh, okay, it's about Mitchell Welps. And his best friend comes out to him. It's about Mitchell, and he's going through his junior year, and issues with girls, and issues with school. He has to do this big pro- He does a very short- He does a claymation for a class, and then he tries to turn it in for his Grapes of Wrath project, and it causes issues because controversy, and- religion and then he, his best friend comes out with him to him too and he's dealing with that where he reacts like he's fine with it but then there's some issues um that follow after his best friend comes out to him so it was a really really good book and i think it's because my expectations of it were so low that like i had it, it ended up being a five-star book i was just like i had like no expectations of liking this book at all and it was really really um easy read and i really really enjoyed it so i was very surprised by this and very very happy about how surprised i was by it and i'm gonna put it down now because white ballot i read half bad by Sally green i actually really enjoyed it um, I like the snapshot style at the beginning of the story in the first few chapters where you're seeing these snapshots of 
uh, Nathan's character in this situation that you don't really understand. Uh, the whole world where the witches are pure witches or dark witches, but the pure witches actually end up being doing a lot of things that are more evil than the dark witches, maybe. Or that's what it seems like. I re that's a trope that you kind of see, but I really, really enjoyed it. Um, the only thing is that the whole relationship between Nathan and Annalise is just meh. And also, if they're going to go towards the direction of a, a relationship between Nathan and Gabriel, they need to develop that relationship in book so much more. I actually have the next book on my Kindle now, so I'm probably going to read it this month. But like, just develop Nathan and Gabriel's relationship. Just end the thing with Annalise completely, because that's a mess. Definitely would recommend it to try it and see if you're going to like the series. I'm going to go read the second book and see if I like that. We'll see. Maybe I'll actually finish a trilogy. I've never finished a trilogy before, so that might happen. We'll see. We'll see. Beauty Queens by Libra Bay. Really, really loved this for about 60%. Then it got a little weird, and I wasn't really there for it. And then there was like, you get a love interest. You get a love interest, and I didn't need that. Um, and... Yeah, it was it was interesting, but I, I think um, as an overall book, really, really good. Really fantastic characters. The main character, Dina, is an awesome feminist character. I really, really enjoyed her. But then, other than that, there are lesbian characters, there are bisexual characters. There is a character who is deaf in one ear. There is a character who is trans. There is a character... Um, there's two characters of color that I really, really enjoyed. The character, Nicole, I really could relate to some of her experience as a black person. Um... And I really, really, like, I really related to some of her experience. And I really, really enjoyed that. Like, right off from the beginning when I first, when she, we first got a chapter about her. There's a lot of perspectives. Um, I didn't need pirates. There were pirates at one point. I didn't need that. Also, I didn't even say what this book is about. It's basically these beauty queen plane crashes on this island. And they have to survive there. So, yeah. It was a good book. I just, there were just little elements that really irked me. Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I liked this story. I didn't know it was going to be a series at first. But the problem is not that it's going to be a series. It's that where it ends feels so useless to me. It ended at a point where it's like you're doing all of this to try to get this person out of jail. This is not really a heist book. It's more of a prison break book. They're trying to get this person out of jail. And they're doing all this to get that person out of jail. And it's like this big, huge process with the magic and all that. And I'm sitting there just like, at the end, like... What was the point? I don't know. At least I tapped out. Um, up until that point that I really was liking it, it's just the ending kind of crashed it for me. And I wasn't... But I'm probably going to read the second book. Let's be honest. It, I'll probably read the next book just because I really like some of the characters. And they're one of the characters is definitely a guy. Um, and it looks like one of the other characters is two. And so there might be some type of relationship between the two of them that will be forming more in the later books. And so I would be about that. So I'm probably going to get the next book when it comes out. Um, Santa Time was a MM romance about this guy named Burke who goes, whose sister sends him off on a vacation to like a gay resort. Burke's not a gay resort kind of guy. But he ends up meeting a guy there who is mysterious, but really, really sweet. And really, he likes him a lot and they start building a relationship. But the guy has some weird things going on. It seems like he's spying on some people. He keeps seeing the guy with the binoculars saying he's bird watching when he knows nothing about bird watching. And it was really interesting. It was a really short, sweet story. And I really liked what the mystery ended up being because I just thought it was really funny. Like, okay, that makes sense, actually. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this a lot. Ended up rating it pretty highly on Goodreads. I don't remember that, but I remember rating it pretty highly. Lost Hair and Nail. This is the second book on the Shatterhunter Academy book. Gave it five stars. Really, really enjoyed it. It's basically a series about Simon, and I love Simon's characters. My two favorite characters from that series are Simon and Magnus, and so I really liked it. It's Simon uh, finding issues with the laws of the Shadowhunter world, essentially. They're showing the laws of the Shadowhunter world, and he's going like, no, this is not something that people should just be okay with. Everything Begins and Ends at the Kentucky Club is by Brenjamin Malaire Science, who wrote Aristotle and Dante's Discovered Secrets of the Universe. Um, so this story is a, this book is a bunch of short stories. Each of them I rated about five or four stars. There's only one that I rated three stars in the entire collection. And some of the stories have gay characters, some of the stories have straight characters. The connection is that in each of these stories, someone goes to the Kentucky Club. And it was all the stories were just so good. They were sad. There were things about depression. There were things about suicide. There were things about love. There were things about despair. There were things about war. There were things about race. There's things there's hate crimes. There's stories that center around hate there's a story that center around the hate crime that just really got to me. 
Oh man, it was just, just wonderful short stories. The last short story, it's probably one of the more more hopeful ones in the book. So it, it the entire collection ended on a very hopeful note, and I just really really liked it. All the writing is beautiful. I bet Jamal Sands writing is really beautiful. It was just like whoa. I knew that already from Arizona and Dante, but like in this collection, I was just like, whoa, again, like there were so many moments where I was just like, I want to highlight all of this. Um, so yeah, if you want to read more Benjamin Life Science after reading Arizona and Dante Discover the Circles Universe, because I know a lot of people liked it and haven't read much more by him, I think this short story collection is pretty good if you like short stories. So I definitely recommend it. You guys should check it out. Waiting for Clark, I read at the beginning of the month, and it was a short and memorable romance that I rated five stars. I'm trying to remember. Everything it's about. It's basically these two nerdy guys who were friends in college, and I think they were roommates, and they both had feelings for each other, but it didn't go anywhere. And so now it's a few years later, and they have a second shot at a romance at a convention where one of them is dressed like Superman and the other is dressed like Batman. And it was cute. It was so very geeky, and I just really, really liked it. Um, also, I paired the, there's an asexual character in their friend group, and I was like, oh! Don't see that enough. And so, yeah, that was something that popped out in my head. And it was just really, really good. So definitely recommend it. And um, it's completely free. Um, I, uh, it's free. I will put a link down to it down below if I remember to put a link down to it down below. If not, remind me, someone. Uh, so, yeah, that's a free story. I read a bunch of Truman Capote stories because of the Eminent Outlaws book, which is a book about gay writers who changed America. I'm still not done reading the entire collection of that. Um, but I read... Four Truman Capote stories, um, three short stories, and one um, lo a little bit longer story. I think Ephesus and Tiffany's is a little short, but not it's as short as the other short stories. I went to the short stories first just because uh, House of Flowers was good. It's a, the character's name is Oolittle or something like that. It's a female character, main character, who um, ends up marrying this guy, but the step, his mother hates her or something, and it's bit, it's it gets kind of creepy. It gets kind of like... Titus and Dronicus for a second, and then, it, but it ends at a weird point where I'm just like, what's, why did this, what was the point of the story? So that wasn't the, my best one, which is why I'm mentioning it first, because I pretty much loved all the rest of them. The Diamond Guitar was this uh, queer story. Um, it really was a queer story. Um, it's about this guy, guy in prison um, who's been in prison for a long time, and then there's a new person in the prison who he starts to bond with, this younger guy, and they plan an escape together. And yeah, it, this story got me. This story got me. I was like, there are t at least one of you is in love with the other. I don't know if both of you are in love with each other. One of you is in love with the other, though, and I was feeling it. I was just like, oh, I can't. I can't right now. So yeah, that was a really good short story. It's called Diamond and Guitar. Uh, shouldn't be hard to find. Um, then I read my favorite of the short stories was A Christmas Memory. A Christmas Memory is a story about this young guy, this young boy, who, and it's about his last Christmas with uh, an older uh, family member of his. Like it's, I think it's like his older cousin. She's like an elderly woman, his cousin. And it's about their last Christmas together. And it was so detailed and the descriptions were so beautiful. And I just really, 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 like it, that, that story got me. It's it, it, That story made me cry a little bit. I'm not even gonna lie. I was just like, oh, I know this was gonna happen, but I can't, you know what I mean? Like it was just like, Ah, oh, man. It was beautiful. And be beautiful descriptions, beautifully well done. I love Truman Capote's writing. And definitely, if you read Breakfast at Tiffany's and you liked it, that's something you should definitely check out. As for Breakfast at Tiffany's, I love Breakfast at Tiffany's. Um, Holly Golightly, such an interesting character. She's really crazy. I love the main character. Also, I really liked it. This is a story about a gay guy and a neighbor's kind of Ro romantic love, almost, I'd say. Like, it's platonic love. Like, he, they, they, you know, that, that's something that kind of grows between them. It's interesting. And I know that in the movie, it's very, very different. Like, they change it completely. Um, but, like, th like, the main character and Holly aren't love interests in this book. You know what I mean? They're not. They're really not. And I really like that. And Holly's just interesting. I really want to watch the movie and see how they did it, because I know they changed a lot of things. But Breakfast Tiffany's, really, really good. Uh, I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. And I'm really glad that I did that. The Shakespeare Steeler. This is about a guy named Wedge. And this is in the time period uh, where Shakespeare has written Hamlet and they're producing it on stage. He has to go steal Hamlet from Shakespeare. He is sent by someone who buys him. He's an apprentice to go and transcribe Hamlet um, when he goes to watch it in like his notebook. Um, and ends up kind of getting caught. But being able to play it off as him saying he wants to join the theater or something like that, and ends up being in Shakespeare's theater company. 
and still Taz to steal Hamlet. And this was a really good book. I really, really loved this book. It was really enjoyable. I read this when I was in hospital, um, when I was in recovery, and it just was, it, it just enthralled me completely, and I really, really enjoyed it a lot. So I really, really like this book. This is a book that my boyfriend picked out for me, and so maybe I should make him, let him put books out for me more often. He tries to make me read books a lot that he likes, and this was a good one, so I'll maybe let him pick out another book for me. <laughs> That's it for this video. If you read any of these books, you just tell me what you thought of them down below, or and tell me what you some what your favorite thing you read in February was, because that'd be really cool too. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.